Welcome to the second video in this three-part series of In the Labs with Todd, where I'm going to take you through creating a garden bench. Now in the first video, if you've missed it, I would highly suggest you go back and check it out. I went through the process of sketching out a bench and then designing it in the software and then creating the tool pass for it so we could cut it using vCarve Pro. In this video, what we're going to do is we're open that exact same file that we ended up with and add some elements to it to make it a little bit nicer using the tools that we have available to us in Aspire. Now, if you don't have Aspire yet, if you've been on the fence about getting it, or if you're just new to Aspire, then this will be the video for you. If you don't have it, why don't you head over to vectric.com, go up to free trials and choose Aspire, and then simply click download Aspire trial, fill in a few questions, and you can download that for free and install it. Once you have that installed, then like I said, all the things I'm gonna show you, you can do in that trial version. Now, right now, let's go ahead and open up that file that we ended up with and have a closer look at what we did last time. Okay, this is the file that we ended up in vCurve in our last video. And let's just kind of recap what we did last time around. So we started out, I did a quick drawing on a piece of paper, did a little search of the internet, ended up finding some nice drawings, got some measurements off of that, and we created a basic sort of start to this. We took that, I showed you how to export that as a PDF so you could create a little bit of a maquette so you could actually see it in full 3D. Took that final design, made a few changes to it, made it happy in our software so that we could cut it on our CNC, taking into account all the fillets and making sure all the parts would fit together nicely. Then we broke it out onto some more sheets and these sheets were defined by the actual material that I had in stock to cut these out with. And then we created some really basic tooling, keeping into account some of our allowances and so on. So again, everything fits together nicely in the end. Now, I'd like to take this a step farther and that's why we have it in Aspire. I'd like to use some of our modeling tools in Aspire, some of the simple ones, to create a really unique design on this. But first of all, let's figure out how much space we have on our um, bench to customize. And so for me personally, the most important part of the bench that I think we should customize, or the easiest to, would be the bench backing. So let's go ahead and double click on that sheet and we'll zoom in. Now, first of all, we need to figure out how much space we have on that bench, back bench to kind of use. So best way to do that would be to create a box. So let's create a box that's around 12 by five, and that'll be good. So we'll create that and we'll close this down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna center this box inside our uh, backboard. So let's go ahead and have a look at our alignment tools. Now our alignment tools say to align the selected objects to the last item in the selection. So we're gonna select our inside box, our outside, and then we're gonna go ahead and center that. And there we have it, and now we can close that down. Now, one of the most important things that you need to understand about using 3D content in a file like this is a thing that we call pixel density. If we take a look at the sheet right now, which is the board number one, and we go down to edit, you'll see that it's a huge board. It's 72 inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall. The thickness is one inch. Now we're going to, you're only going to use a very small section of that, so we're, we're only going to use a, a, like maybe a sixth of the pixels. And for right now, we have our modeling resolution set to be a standard, so we only have one million pixels to work with. And so if you think about that, that's not many pixels that we have in that little rectangle to work with, so we want to increase that. We could simply go ahead and make the modeling resolution for this sheet much higher, but that probably isn't still gonna be good enough. So the best thing we can do is actually create a brand new sheet that's exactly the same size as the area that we wanna cut our model or our 3D content into. So let's just go ahead and click cancel. And we're gonna go and we're gonna add a new sheet. And this new sheet we're gonna call detail. And then we're gonna note that it took into account the last size sheet that we had highlighted. So it's a huge sheet. We don't want it that size. So let's go back to our detail sheet and we're gonna edit that and we're gonna change that to be 12 inches by five inches. And we're gonna set our datum to the center. That'll be important and I'll get to that in a little bit why we're doing that. And we'll make sure that we set that to a very high resolution. We're gonna have 4 million pixels to work with for our our relief and our modeling that we're going to create. So that's perfect. And we can go ahead and click OK. Now that's the next thing we should do is go and see if we can find some clip art to get us started. The first place that I would start, of course, would be store.designandmake.com. So let's head on over there and see what we can find. OK, 
Okay, now that we're at designandmake.com, let's just search for a piece of clip art that we think would be kind of nice. For me, I I was kind of hoping that this might go into a garden, maybe something for Mother's Day. So maybe we should type in bonsai tree. Oh, well, there's a bonsai tree right there. So let's click on that. And because we're putting this into a flat piece of material that's going to be on the back, that's already been profile cut it out. We should do something in a dish. That way it's below the surface of the model or below the surface of the material. That looks pretty good. So let's go ahead with that. Let's go ahead and add that item to our cart and check out and download that to our PC. And then we're going to take it and create a quick sample of that so we can see how this will cut. So this is the end result of that cut and it looks pretty nice. Um, I think though that it would look better on the back of our bench in a different shaped dish and maybe we can add in a nice kind of border around it um, and also a place so we can add some bee carving. So to add those extra elements, we're gonna actually have to use a spire to create those things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that new sheet that we just created and we're gonna create a box that's gonna be about 10, 0.5 by 3.5. We're going to make sure that we start that at 0, 0. So it'll be right in the middle of our job. We can click create and close that down. Now we have turned on our snapping options here for our grid. If you remember correctly, up under edit, down to snap options, we set our grid spacing to be 0.25 of an inch. So that means each one of these boxes is 0.25 of an inch, which is great. Let's just zoom in a bit and we'll select that box and we're going to go into node mode and we're going to in, insert in some nodes here. So we're going to count in three boxes or three quarters of an inch and we're going to press I on our keyboard and insert a node there. We're going to count down three, hover over there, we're going to hit I there. And then what we can do is we're going to drag down that corner one and it will snap there where it belongs. We're going to go in two again and we're going to insert a node there and one there. We're going to drag that up to there. Let's kind of make sure that snaps onto that like it should. And then we're going to press insert here, another node, insert there. And that looks pretty close to what we want now. We may just want to go ahead and just kind of make sure those are nice and straight. When I dropped in those nodes, they might not have actually fell on where they should be. And that's exactly what I want right there. That looks great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this here because we want to have these on all four corners. So we're going to hit C on our keyboard over top of that vector and C here. And then we can just select that other part of that line and we'll delete that out of there. And going back to our pick tool, we can go ahead and select that piece. Now we're going to hold down our control shift and H key. So what, the, what that means is control means copy shift means across one of our vertices. And in this case, we're going to use H. So if I do that, you'll see that we have it copies over there. Perfectly. Grab those both again, control shift and V will flip that vertically down to the bottom of our job space. Now we just need to simply click connect those up. 
So we're with our shift key held down, we're gonna go ahead and select those top two. We'll connect those, grab this one here, we'll connect those, grab this one here, and we'll click that twice. And there we have our finished shape. Now that looks really cool. What we're gonna do with this is we're actually gonna go to one of our modeling tools and we're gonna be using the um, extrude and weave tool, but we need a cross section for that. So up here, just anywhere, so we're gonna quickly draw a square box. And it's gonna snap onto our node. So we know that it's gonna be a quarter inch square. Let's close that down. Let's go into node mode and let's delete this bottom one, this bottom span here. Now that looks really nice. I think that if we took that and we extruded it around, it would look really sharp, except for maybe these sharp corners at the top, although in the end they'd probably be rounded over, but I'd like to round them over so I get a nice soft edge to this weave. So we're going to go down and reuse our fillet tool again, except we're going to type in a much smaller number than what is here. We're putting zero, 03, and then we're just going to go ahead and click. Let's just kind of softens that. Actually, we might be able to. Let's just double that a little bit. Let's make that a little bit more. Great thing again about this fillet tool is you can just by snapping or clicking over top again, it'll undo the last fillet. And there we go. Oh, that looks perfect. I like that a lot. So let's close that down. And then we're going to go into our extrude and weave tool. That's in our modeling tab. And again, you can't do this sort of thing in VCarve Pro. You need to have Aspire to do this, and it's a really simple thing to do. So let's click there. We're gonna use this drive rail. So we're gonna use that selection. We're gonna make sure that we use a vector for the cross section here. And we're gonna create square corners and sweep between spans. But the trick with this one is we wanna make sure that we use the weave feature. Now you can choose this, you can update, or you can change these settings to, to your liking if you would want to. But these are the ones that I used and I was quite happy with it. It was 70%. Z under and 130% Z over. And we're gonna scale the end result to a quarter inch. That's how deep I'm gonna make this dish in the back of, or this recess in the back of my bench is gonna be a quarter inch. I don't want to get too thin in the middle. So we're just gonna go down a quarter inch. It might actually it might be a little bit thinner or a little deeper than that, but this is a good start. Um, and let's just go ahead and click apply. Let's take a look at our 3D view and we'll see that we come up with a really nice looking weave. And it's very sort of, has this nice sort of Asian feel, which I think would go along with the bonsai tree really quite nicely. Now, you'll notice here that on one end of this weave, it's quite high, on the other end, it's quite thin. Well, we're gonna make sure that our bonsai tree, the roots of it are on this side of our um, border here so they can tuck in behind that weave. If you find that yours is actually backwards and this is the low point, all you need to do is just select that component, press H on your keyboard and it'll flip it over for you and you'll have that, that higher piece of material at this end. Okay, so let's close that down and let's look straight down on that. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's rename that just weave so we can keep track of everything. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and import in our bonsai tree. And seeing as it's a single model from Design and Make, I can just go to import a component or 3D model. I'm gonna navigate over to where I saved it off and that's it right there. I'll just select that and we'll click open. And we see that our bonsai tree pops right in there. It's set to a merge component over here. So you see that it blends in nicely with our border that we have. And I can just go ahead and size that down and put it where I want it to be. Some of the things I want to keep in mind when I place this tree is that there's enough room between the border and the top of the tree to fit a tool, or at least most of a tool. That way I can, if there's any kind of sort of extra little uh, bit of material there, I can sand it out if I need to, but that looks like it's pretty good. And then I want to check the shape height to make sure that it is going to be tall enough. And one of the ways you can do that is turn it up on its edge and then go ahead and mess around with your slider here. We don't want to be any more than a quarter inch thick Actually, you know what? That's probably just about right there, 1.7. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's great. And let's look down on that and close that down. Now I'm happy with that, but it's still proud of my modeling plane, which won't do me any good because I want to put it in a dish so it's actually recessed into the back of my bench. So to do that, I want to create some kind of a, a dish shape for the better use of a word. I'm not really sure what we're going to call it, but some kind of a recess there. Let's go back to our 2D view for a second. 
Let's just put that back in here so we can see it. Now to do this, what I'm gonna use is one of our new shape creation tools. I'm gonna to use this, this option here that we're gonna use a custom vector profile to create a shape with. I'm going to use, I'm gonna sweep it around uh, another vector, which I don't have yet, so I need to get that. It needs to have a vector to follow. And we're gonna subtract that or create a recessed dish, okay? So let's close that down. And we need to get that profile vector, that vector to run it around. So let's select that weave that we created. And we're gonna create a vector boundary around selected component. So as I click that, you'll see that we have this new vector boundary created. I'm gonna right click on that and we're gonna ungroup that because I don't want this inside vector. All I want is this outside one. So now that it's ungrouped, I simply need to hold down my shift key, deselect the part that I wanna keep, and then press delete on my keyboard and that gets rid of everything else. So that's a start. Now what I wanna do is take this, I wanna offset it outwards a certain distance that I want this dish to be. So with that selected, I'm gonna to go to my drawing tool. I'm gonna to go down to offset. And I'm gonna offset it outwards 0.5 of an inch. I want to have sharp corners. And we may as well go ahead and have it select the new one. Let's offset that outwards. Let's close that down. That looks pretty nice. So that's the, the profile. That's gonna be the outside edge of our dish. Now we need to actually have that profile vector to create the edge shape of the dish. To do that, I've already got one created already. So I'm gonna go up to file and I'm gonna import in a vector. And I've got it right here. So I'm just gonna click open. And there it is right there. A little vector it's a pretty simple little vector it's not too complicated but what i want to do is i want to make sure that i subtract it or move it down through my material so this is actually the top edge when i'm all done and that will make it a dish so to do this we're going to go back to our modeling tab go up to our shape creation tools now i highly suggest that you go ahead and play around with a lot of these you might get a uh, profile or a recess shape that you really like in the end out of just using some of those basic tools. But this is a brand new feature of version 11 and I thought I'd give it a shot in the end. So we're gonna go ahead and use the custom vector profile. So we're gonna select this, hold down our shift key and that, okay? Now, because I wanted to recess it into the material surface, I'm gonna give it a negative base height, okay? I'm gonna sweep that around. I'm gonna give it a shape height of a quarter inch. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm creating a positive shape that I'm gonna recess into the material. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And we're gonna call this dish. And we can go ahead and click apply. And we click in our 3D view and we'll see what we have. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. Now, typically this shape could only have been achieved by using a two rail sweep. Um, but in my case, I'm using it doing the, the, the shape creator, which is much faster. And uh, I don't need to worry about creating that second vector that, that I would need and lining everything up. It just worked out perfect for me. So I'm really quite happy with that. So let's close that down. Now, the next thing I need to do, and this is sort of something that you should do every time that you cut something in a dish, is you need to add in a zero plane. And what that does is it makes it so that your tool won't go off the edge of your dish if by chance you happen to um, have a really small cutter and there's, it, the, the vectors don't quite line up with the pixels that are there. You can have little, dip, little dots around the outside of your, your model. You may have seen that before. Well, this will eliminate that because you can ride your tool up onto it and it won't fall off the edge. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now that we're done with that, the next thing we're going to want to do is add in some V-carving. So let's go ahead over to our drawing tab, go back to our 2D view again. And we're gonna select all that we see here. And I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna move that to um, a layer. Okay, and we're gonna move that to our layer one. Why I'm doing that is because as I've been creating things, the software's created its own layers for that content. And I wanna put it all on one, on one layer because I wanna move this dish backwards. So I wanna take the grayscale bitmap representation of that dish, and I wanna move it back to the stack so that I can now see all my other clip art there in the 2D view. So I know how much space I have for my V carving or my text over here. So the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and type in some text. Now the text I wanna use is gonna be wise souls speak loudly. Okay. 
Oh, and you'll see what's happened here now in my text creation box that a spelling mistake has been highlighted here. Now this is again, a brand new feature in version 11. We now have a spell checker built in. So I can go ahead and select that, right click on that, go down to spell checker and find the word silence in there and it'll automatically correct it for me. Now I like that the way it is. I can kind of move it where I'd like it to be, except for I think I would like it in italics instead. So if we click italics, I think it looks much better, but the letter spacing is really not okay. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's close this down. And with that selected, we can go up here to our edit text spacing and curve. Turn that on. And if I hover between my letters and I click, you'll see that the letters get closer together. If I hold down my shift key and click, they get wider apart. So I can go ahead now and just kind of fix the kerning between the letters and make sure they look pretty good. Just kind of click around there until we get everything we want it to be. I think that looks all right. If I decide that I want to change the, the, the spacing between letters for this whole line, I can hold down my Alt key and click. And I can hold down my Alt and Shift key. And I can click again and, and widen it back out again. Again, brand new feature of version 11 is that we can adjust the spacing through all the characters in that line by holding down that Alt key. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just maybe move it up just a little bit. And now at this point, it's time to create some really basic tooling for this. Back to when we created the, the sample that we have, we're gonna be creating just a basic roughing pass, a finishing pass, and then adding in our V carving, and we'll be done. But there's one thing that we need to take into consideration. And remember when I set this up, I decided to set my datum to the center of this actual sheet. That's because in order for me to line it up on my actual material, I'll need to use a new start point. And in this case, I'm going to start at the middle of my um, backboard. And if I make sure I have my start point in the center of this new sheet, then I'll start to cut right in the middle. The only thing I need to be sure I do is zero off my Z from the one of the edges of the board, because I'm going to be removing a lot of that material. I won't be able to zero there anymore. So the top tip, something to keep in mind. And hopefully I'll remember when I get in the lab to do the same thing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create the tooling for this job. First thing we're going to do is tile our views just so we can see the both the 2D and the 3D view. I'll need to zoom into my sheet up top here. There we are. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our material setup. Now, first of all, our material thickness is one inch. As I mentioned a minute ago, our datum is set to the center. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface. We're going to make sure that our model position is right at the very top of our material. If you're worried that your material is not flat on the top, then you might want to drop it down a little bit, but I'm going to take my chances and put it right at the very top. And your rapid Z gaps and home start position are set and make sure they're safe and appropriate for your machine. So I'm just going to click OK. Now you're going to get this warning. These warnings I've seen before when I was calculating my tool paths, I know about them all. I think they're safe and there's no problems here at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to start off by doing a roughing pass. So we're going to go ahead and choose roughing. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill for that. We're going to make sure we use a selected vector. So we're going to select that vector right here. We're going to have a zero boundary offset. I don't want it to cut outside of that vector. If by chance my material is a little bit uh, tall, a little bit thicker than I think, then I'd end up having an extra little recess around the outside edge, and I don't want that. So I'm going to start right on the inside of that line and work my way in. Machining allowance is going to be set to 0.02, so I'm going to leave a little bit of material behind for my finishing bits to get to. We're going to use Z-level roughing as my roughing strategy. I'm going to leave my raster angle at zero. I think that'll follow the grain of my wood and it'll look quite nice. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and just rename that to 3D Roughing and we'll click Calculate. And as always, when you calculate a toolpath, make sure you preview that visible toolpath. If it doesn't look quite right, then you're going to need to go in and check your tooling. And that looks perfect just the way I wanted to see it. Yeah, let's close that down. The next one is going to be our 3D Finishing toolpath. Now, new to version 11 is something that we call rest machining. So we can use more than one tool in our finishing toolpath. Typically, that would be a, 
a larger tool that will go in and get most of the detail for you and then a smaller tool that will go in and get that really, really fine detail. In this case, we're gonna start off with a tapered ball nose. This is a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill and we're gonna select a 1 16. Now, this is just for demonstration in my actual end project. I didn't use the rest machine that we're gonna see here, mainly because uh, I knew the material that I was using, the detail wouldn't hold up in the end. So, uh, but this is just for a demonstration. So you can see that if you're using something like Corian or you're gonna make a mold of your project, then getting this extra detail might be really important for you. We're just gonna select that. Now we're gonna make sure that we sort these in the order that's proper. So we wanna actually cut the bigger tool first and the smaller tool second, okay? That's great. We're gonna use that selected vector. Again, no boundary offset. We have some rest machining options here. We're gonna leave them just as they are. The software will figure out what it feels is the best. If I'm not happy with that, I can go ahead and change those. But for right now, I'm gonna leave those just the way they are. We're gonna use um, a raster strategy for our finishing. We're gonna leave the raster angle at zero again. Again, it's gonna follow the grain of our wood, which would be kind of nice. And we'll just call that 3D finish. We'll get rid of that one there. And we're gonna calculate that. And once this is done calculating, we're going to see it's going to have two, two tool paths. It's going to have the one for the bigger tapered ball nose and then one for the smaller 1 16th. Um, and we can choose whether or not we want to use them by previewing those to make sure that we're going to get the results that we want. Okay, so now you'll see down here we have two tool paths. We have a 3D finish that's called clear. And so it's going to go in if I turn off the 3D finish and it's going to get rid of most of the material for me. And the second tool path, you'll see it's gonna go into these specific areas and go ahead and clean out some of that material that was left behind. So let's just preview these one at a time, just so we can see the differences here. Let's preview this visible tool path. You'll see it's gonna go along with that 1 16th ball nose end mill, the tapered one, sorry, the 1 8th inch ball nose, the tapered ball nose. Now there we have it. Now you can see that the tree actually doesn't look too bad in the end. But if we go ahead now and preview the second bit, which is the 1 16th, you'll see that we'll go in and we'll get a lot more detail. Now again, in my, in this particular case, I'm not gonna need that second tool path. I don't think that's gonna help me much in the end. I am gonna do a bit of sanding. So a lot of that detail will be blown away. But in a lot of cases, that will help out a lot. If I did wanna get that high detail across everything, then I'd be wasting a lot of time machining these flat areas with that 1 16th. So you can see how this would save me time if I needed that detail. For now, I'm gonna go back into my tool path. I'm gonna remove that smaller bit. I'm just gonna recalculate that again. And we're just gonna use that one tool path. Let's reset our preview and let's just preview all those tool paths again. Yeah, there we have it. I think that looks really good. So now all we need to do is just add in our V carving. Let's go ahead and close that down. Go to our V carving tool path here. We're gonna select our text. Now you'll note that I have a start depth of 0 0.01 there. I do this quite often. That will just automatically kind of bold up my text a little bit by making the bit kind of start deeper, just a little bit deeper than, than being right on the surface. And so I, I like that kind of effect. We're gonna use a 60 degree V bit for that. And we're gonna make sure that we project that tool path onto the 3D model. This is important, a lot of people forget this. If you don't click that on, what'll happen is it'll put that V carving right on the top of your material and there isn't any material there. So you won't see anything in the end. So you wanna make sure you project that onto your 3D model. Let's just go ahead and delete that and we'll calculate that. And we'll preview that visible tool path. And that's perfect, that's exactly what I wanna see in the end. And I think that's gonna look quite lovely on the back of our bench. I hope you now can see how easy it is to use some of the very basic tools in Aspire and create a really interesting bespoke layout for your projects. Now, some of the things that we, we did cover in this video are things like pixel density, how important that is when you're using 3D content. Snap to grids when you're trying to lay out some nice straight vectors. Connecting open vectors, of course, if you get some that are open, that's a pretty good one to know. Extrude and weave tool, again, a really simple way to take one cross section and make a really interesting border. 
A vector, creating a vector boundary from components, that's something we use all the time when we're creating layouts and we want to do things like profile cuts around 3D content. Offsetting a vector is always useful in all kinds of different things. Shape creating um, using the new V11 custom profile that worked really, really well to create that really interesting looking sort of dish shape that we had. Couldn't have done it without that, or if I had it, I would have had to use some other tools that would have taken me much more time to get the right look. Adding a zero plane when you're cutting something below the surface of your material is always helpful to have in there. Spell checker for somebody like me, who's not all that great at spelling, it's really quite handy. And again, that's a new feature in version 11. Make sure that when you're changing the kerning of your text, that you don't forget about using that alt key to change the space between all your letters in a row. The start depth on a V carving might be a way to make your V carving look a little bit more bold. I use it quite often and I think it does help a lot. Um, your project, your tool paths onto 3D models. Make sure that you use that all the time. If you see that your V carving isn't showing up where you expect it, just make sure that you do project that onto your 3D component. And then of course, rest machining in version 11. I just kind of gleaned over that just a little bit. I show you how to, how it worked. And I, like, like you saw, I didn't actually use it in the end, but it is super handy to have in your toolbox, especially if you do a lot of 3D carving and you want to get that, all that really nice detail in there. So now that we have all of those tool paths created, in the next video, we're going to take those into the lab and we're actually going to cut those. I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to get this thing all assembled up and looking really good in the end. And also, I'm going to point out some of the things I would change next time around if I was going to make another one. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And if you'd like to get notifications of when we release new videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Until the next video, keep safe.